just to give you a very brief overview of the agenda, uh, we are very proud to have Mr. Sabri Talal Al Zadi, Senior Specialist of um, the In Country Value uh, Operations of Atnok, on the call. I'll give a brief introduction to MBG Corporate Services. And then we have Mr. Naresh Manshanda from our ICB core team, who is literally living and breathing this uh, interesting program since almost two years. Naresh will run through the program and highlight strategies to improve the score um, for companies who are already here in the UAE or companies who are planning to come. And then we have an open Q&A session at the end. So if you have any questions, uh, please send them across to the uh, chat uh, on the bottom of this um, the page. I know there is a lot of questions generated from this. Um, and we try to answer all the, your questions uh, at the end of the session. My name is Björn Köhler. I'm a general manager of the European Business Desk of MBG Corporate Service here in the UAE and your moderator for today. Next slide, please. I would like uh, to hand over to Mrs. Johanna Wittholm uh, from the Swedish Business Council to address the welcome note. Johanna is um, Executive Director at the Swedish Business Council here in the UAE. SBC is a platform for Swedish um, or Swedish connected professionals and businesses in the UAE established in 1994. For the past five years, Johanna has successfully worked to connect, support and promote members of the network both in the UAE and in a previous role at the Business uh, Swedish Council in Texas, UAE. Johanna, over to you. Thank you, Bjorn, for that introduction. Hello, everyone. And uh, again, warm welcome to today's webinar on the, the Unified ICV program and the improvement plan strategies. Uh, as uh, Bjorn mentioned, my name is Johanna Widholm, and I work as uh, one of the executive directors at the Swedish Business Council. And uh, I would just like to mention on behalf of the Nordic Business Council and um, whom we are uh, co-organizing this event with, that uh, we are very happy to be back in business and uh, uh, to kickstart this fall with uh, today's webinar. Uh, very pleased to see so many uh, attendees today. Um, and um, so this fall is going to have a mix of face-to-face -face events in Dubai uh, at the moment, and uh, we'll continue with the webinars, it's catering to all. So with this, I would like to uh, hand the mic back to uh, Mr. Björn uh, Köhler at, uh, at um, the MBG Corporate Services. And MBG Corporate Services is actually one of our uh, new uh, corporate members at the Swedish Business Council. So we're very happy about that. And um, thank you very much for organizing this event with us. Over to you, Björn. Thank you very much, Johanna. And thanks a lot for, uh, to you and your team for, uh, and of course to the other business council to uh, organizing this joint um, seminar. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will just give you a brief overview about MBG Corporate Services for those who are not familiar with us. Established, next slide, please. Established in 2002, we now have 16 offices across six locations. Uh, all of them are in high growth markets. We service European, Middle East and Asian markets with our dedicated teams of European, Japanese, Chinese and Singaporean nationals who bridge the gap, who bridge the cultural, linguistic and technical gap between the headquarters sometimes and here in UAE with um, certain yeah, challenges we, uh, they may face. Um, we are very proud to serve more than 3,000 clients globally, more than, five, more than 100 uh, Fortune 500 clients belongs to our portfolio, served by more than 450 professionals across the globe. Next slide, please. As a firm, we support organizations at every stage of their life circle, from inception throughout the growth journey, all the way through to maternity and extension. Needless to say, during these challenging times, people are looking for guidance on how to support to deal uh, with uh, recent developments, no matter what stage of the life circle uh, they are at. Next slide, please.
Yeah, the next two pages will cover our uh, portfolio. We have a wide range of services that enables us to support organizations wherever they are in their journey. We have the traditional audit and assurance practice, um, business uh, the taxation services, as well as um, um, a risk advisory, our risk advisory, uh, together with the other departments help uh, with the ICB certification. Yeah, we are very proud to be one of the ICB certifying bodies uh, since, since last year, and we are heavily working on, on um, yeah, certifi to certify companies, as well as uh, advice on um, yeah, improve the ICB score. Next slide, please. We have an M&A service line, which is working closely with our in-house legal team uh, to advise on um, M&A transactions. We are working continuously with organizations in their strategy and transformation, transformation requirements. And obviously, technology is not an area which is uh, um, it's no longer siloed to IT anymore. Technology is integrated in every part of, of an organization. And we have fully fledged technology department to help out our clients with their digital transformation. Next slide, please. When it comes to the recent developments um, and the latest pandemic, we have uh, been experiencing, we have been flexible to market and responsive to our clients to develop a specific, a specific COVID-19 support service, which you can see here from risk, tax, legal, and our technology department. Next slide, please. As a firm, we are industry agnostic. We will support every organization, no matter in which industry they are at. We have the manpower internally and able to support with our huge expertise. Next slide, please. With that uh, all said and done, I would like to hand over to Mr. Zabri who will give you an overview about the latest development of the unified ICB program. Next slide, please. Mr. Zabri Alzadi is an, inter, is an accounting and auditing professional working for Adnoc's ICB department. Zabri is responsible for leading the development and implementation of accounting and auditing procedures and serves as a subject matter expert on several projects. Zabri, over to you. Thanks, thanks a lot for that introduction, uh, Buren. Very happy to be with you here uh, this uh, morning as we uh, discuss the unified ICV program as well as the ad hoc uh, implementation of the ICV program. Uh, let me just put up my slides on the uh, screen here. So the slides should be uh, visible to you now, I believe. We can see it. Okay, perfect. So the, uh, I'll give you a little, little bit of a background on the ICV uh, program, the unified program first. So the, uh, the ICV program was uh, launched by uh, ADNOC back in 2018 and uh, is continually expanding to include uh, new participating entities from uh, various sectors of the economy. So the uh, program has um, shown its uh, consistent ability to adapt and meet the requirements of the economy. And this is uh, why uh, the program has resonated very well with the uh, participating entities across the various sectors of the economy. And um, in order to ensure that the program is as effective and efficient as possible, the ICB certification process has been aligned across all of the participating entities. So what I int uh, intend to do first, before we dive into the um, um, implementation aspects of the ICB for ADNOC, is give you just an overview of the enhanced uh, version of the um, ICV certification process that we have uh, launched earlier this year. Now, if you uh, look at the impact of the ICV program over uh, the span of two, uh, two years, which were uh, 2018, 2019, the program has driven more than 44 billion dirhams, which is uh, roughly around 12 billion uh, US dollars back into the UAE economy. And it has created over 1,500 private sector jobs for UAE nationals since it was launched. 
And uh, the basic concept um, is that under the program, suppliers or companies are certified based on their contribution to the country's economy. And essentially, this uh, helps them to uh, secure or be awarded more work. And uh, now with the enhanced program in place, the objectives of the ICV program um, remain the same. Uh, the program remains committed to the objectives that you see on the slide here. So the first objective, amortization, uh, this is done through the development of opportunities for UAE nationals. Uh, GDP diversification through the increased expenditure in uh, a, a growing variety of local goods and uh, services and the, uh, the localization of strategic capabilities for the critical supply chain functions. Uh, so we are committed to only move forward and are very pleased to have aligned the, um, the certification process for the four participating entities, uh, which are ADNOC, the Abu Dhabi Department of Economic Development, which represents the Abu Dhabi government, um, Aldar Properties and Abu Dhabi Ports. So that is really great news for the suppliers because the same unified ICV certificate will be accepted by all of those four entities that I, um, that I just mentioned and uh, that you can see on the um, slide here. So the, the inclusion of the new entities to the uh, program builds on the success of ADNOC's ICV program, which really uh, strengthens our commitment to uh, create and maximize value for the UAE, which is in line with our long-term strategy. And the, um, the logo that you see on the far right here is the logo that now represents the unified ICV program. Now, um, I would like just to note that the in-country value program consists of two separate parts, which are the ICV certification and ICV implementation. So as I had mentioned um, earlier, the ICV certification part is unified and is aligned across all of the participating entities um, that I mentioned on the previous slide. So again, great news and benefit for the suppliers that are now only required to obtain one ICV certificate that can be used in ADNOC, um, uh, uh, Abu Dhabi Ports, Aldar Properties, and Abu Dhabi Department of Economic Development. Um, on the other hand, the ICV implementation is unique in terms of the way that the various entities use the uh, certificates. So in other words, the implementation represents the way each participating entity will use the certificate in its uh, business activities and of course, in accordance with its, um, its own policy. Now, um, a primary um, concern for the program is um, listening to the feedback from the uh, suppliers and the market. So the most recent enhancements uh, to the program and the formula uh, were mainly driven by the feedback that we have uh, received from various channels, including surveys, conferences, and events, um, some of which were hosted by ADNOC senior management. The ICV formula was fine-tuned to enable the program to um, achieve the maximum intended benefits uh, on the economy. Uh, this is uh, what you see on the, um, the slide here. This is a graphical um, illustration of the uh, formula uh, along with the weightage of each uh, one of the attributes in the formula. So um, basically a supplier that is holding an industrial license um, would be considered a goods manufacturer. And for a supplier that is a goods manufacturer, the following attributes will be considered. So number one, um, the goods manufacturer costs. Uh, number two, the investments in the UAE. Um, number three, the amortization. Number uh, four will be the expat contribution. And finally, uh, we do have a bonus that is available to the suppliers, which is uh, 5%, up to 5% um, percentage points. Um, as far as a supplier who is not a goods manufacturer, um, that supplier for the ICV program purposes would be considered a service provider. So for a supplier who is a service provider, um, 
it's essentially the same attributes as the manufacturer with the exception of the first attribute. So instead of manufacturing cost, we would take the, um, what is called the third party cost. And um, so basically, if you wanna take a look at the, the different components of each one of the different attributes that we have. So if we take a look at the first component, the manufacturing and third party spend, uh, the more in country value spend on goods um, or services as a percentage of total costs, the higher the goods manufacturer costs or the third party cost will be. Okay, and that's uh, the, uh, the suppliers can score up to 50% of the ICV score um, on this attribute. Uh, for the second attribute, which is the investments, 25%, um, the higher the fixed asset investments are the higher the investment attribute percentage will be. And what we really mean by the investments here, we're taking a look at the fixed assets. We're looking at things like buildings, uh, machinery, equipment, land, um, anything that pretty much sits in the property, plant, and equipment section on the balance sheet of companies and their financial statements will most likely be considered an investment. And um, similarly, if we move on to the next uh, attribute, which is amortization. So the higher the salaries and benefits that are paid to the UAE nationals, the higher the amortization attributes will be. And here the suppliers can um, achieve even a higher percentage by donating to government universities or uh, Sanduq al-Watan, which is um, an initiative that supports research projects and the development of local talent here in the UAE. And uh, finally, for the expat contribution attributes, uh, we're actually very proud to tell you that the ICV program is one of the, um, one of the few, if not the only local content program in the world that factors in the expat uh, manpower. So suppliers receive a credit for the number of employees that are employed under their direct sponsorship. And as I had mentioned earlier, there is a bonus that is available on the, um, for the suppliers and they can either get a bonus of up to 5% uh, on the exports that they have uh, on the, or it can, it can be on the number of the Emiratis that are employed in their entities. And the final, uh, the final component of the bonus is the investment growth, which is a new addition here in 2020 to the formula, which really encourages the, um, the suppliers to invest more and acquire more fixed assets uh, within the UAE. Now, um, the steps to obtain an ICB certificate essentially remain the same with the enhanced program. So the, um, the first step would be for the suppliers to issue audited financial statements that are based on the IFRS and have those statements audited by a licensed auditor from the uh, Ministry of um, Economy. And then they would uh, need to download the, uh, the supplier submission template from the ADNOC website and fill it as per the detailed guidelines that we have um, available on our website. And I will provide you with the website with all of that information at the end of the uh, presentation here. And uh, next they would have to approach one of the ICV and panel certifying bodies for verification and certification of the information that was filled in on the template. And of course, once the um, certificate is approved and issued, it can then be used at any one of the ICV participating entities. And um, those are the ones that we mentioned previously on the previous slides. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, the ICV certification process that we have um, discussed so far is unified and is aligned across all of the participating entities. Um, the ICV implementation, as I had mentioned earlier, is unique in terms of the way that each one of the entities uses the certificate. And what I'll do now is just give you a brief overview of how ADNOC implements the ICV. So the, um, as part of the commercial bidding process in ADNOC, the bidders are asked to submit two separate documents that are related to the ICV. The first one is the ICV certificate, which details the supplier's calculated ICV score, which has been certified by an ICV certifying body. 
And the second document is what is referred to as the ICV Improvement Plan, which details the supplier's proposed ICV score that is to be attained by the supplier annually during the uh, performance of the uh, agreement or contract. And the average of the ICV percentage from the certificate and the, I, uh, and the improvement plan are uh, put together uh, to determine the ICV ranking of the bidder mm -hmm. during the commercial evaluation. And a common question that I get during uh, those sessions is, what if we don't have an ICV certificate? Does that mean that we can't uh, participate in ad hoc tenders? And the answer is that you, you can still participate in the tenders without an ICV certificate. It's just that the ICV certificate score will be considered as zero for the purposes of the evaluation. And just quickly here, this is a summary of the award strategy at ADNOC. The first stage is the, um, the stage where we actually float the tenders and the pre-qualified suppliers are invited to participate and submit their uh, proposals. And then the, um, the technical evaluation is performed on the submitted proposals using the evaluation criteria and the scoring methodology that were determined for that specific tender. And um, in this stage, only the technical um, uh, quality and um, HSE aspects are evaluated. So the commercial ICV do not form part of this stage. So the technical requirements are not really compromised. This is uh, something that is of um, extreme, uh, very, it's very, very, very important for us at ADNOC, the technical evaluation. Now, the next stage, which is the commercial evaluation uh, uh, stage, uh, this, is, um, this is where we actually, um, only the technically, technically qualified bidders are essentially going to participate in this stage. So only the technically qualified bidders are evaluated and the suppliers are ranked based, based on their commercial codes and the overall ICV score, which is a combination of the ICV percentage and the improvement plan. And finally, the first rights of refusal are granted to the suppliers in sequence from the highest to lowest overall ICV score to match the target price. So the bidders who, uh, the bidder who equates the target price is uh, essentially selected for award. So this is just a, uh, an illustration here of a scenario that we have, let's say for, for a tender. Um, we've got one, two, three, four, five uh, suppliers that have participated here at the, um, um, in this tender. Uh, we see that supplier E is the one that has the highest combined overall ICV score. Um, because he does have the highest overall ICV score, he would be um, requested to essentially match the, uh, the ad hoc target price, which is going to be the, um, the L1 price ranking, the lowest price in most cases. So if the supplier then agrees, then we would award supplier E. And just a note here, we have assumed in this specific scenario is that the, um, the ICV certificate score is uh, given a weightage of 40% while the ICV improvement plan is given a 60 percentage uh, weightage. Okay, and that's how we arrive at the combined ICV score. So, um, with that, really, before I turn the presentation over back to uh, Bern, uh, I would like just to tell you that all of the updated ICV templates, the guidelines, and the presentations are all available on our website, and the address is uh, shown here on the bottom uh, left uh, on, the, uh, on the screen. And also, if you have any further inquiries after today's session, please email us on icv at adnoc.ae. We will be happy to provide you with the required guidance in relation to the ICV program. And with that, I'll turn it uh, back over to Bern. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you very much, Sabri, uh, for the insight and the recent updates on, uh, on ICV. Uh, it's interesting to see how many jobs have been created uh, in the private sector due to this program. Thanks a lot, Sabri. I would like uh, to uh, introduce Mr. you to Mr. Naresh Manchanda. He is a partner and a chief operating officer of MBG Middle East uh, operations. He's a core member of the ICB uh, practice within our organization 
and Naresh will highlight some aspects of the ICV improvement plan. Naresh, over to you. Thank you, Mr. Raymond. Uh, very good morning to everyone. So, in next couple of pages, uh, we'll try to decipher and help you visualize some of the dimensions which are not very visible or clear. So, if you see on this page, we are talking about improvement plan, and on the top section, we are talking about two options. So, one is project based improvement plan or a company based improvement plan. Typically, ADNOC accepts or requests project based improvement plan in the range of about 200 million dirham or so. And it is based on the request and confirmation so that all the competing parties are at the same level. Otherwise, typically it is at the company based improvement plan only. So the legal entity, which is a bidding entity, is the most important arm which plays a significant role in doing the certification as well as the improvement plan. So as Mr. Sabi explained very well, and to give you an analogy, uh, it is not where we stand in life, but which direction we are taking in life is more important. So while the certification is a fact of the matter, where our current score is, but how we will further improve it is the reason ADNOC is giving more weightage around 60% to the improvement plan. Once an improvement plan is made, it is annually through a certification again reviewed by ADNOC's team to make sure that whatever has been committed by the suppliers are adhered to. And in case they are not able to meet, the case study has to be presented and the reasoning has to be decoded to make sure it is some relevant reason and only on very exceptional circumstances there will be some leeway. Otherwise, there are consequences of about 5% retention, as Mr. Sabri earlier explained. Next page, please. Now, on, on this page, we would like to highlight areas which, which is, if you see on the face of it, is not very, very clearly available. So, one of the area in UAE is audit. So, as you would see, there is currently no sort of audit authority where audit reports are reviewed. But through ICV program, with the help of uh, certifying bodies, ADNOC and all the government authorities have put a mechanism in place where we are sitting together and making sure that the financials being submitted and used for the ICV certification is in line, is making sense as per the international standard, which here it is IFRS. Now bringing this message, let's talk about globally, what is the main issue or, or maybe fraud or, or issues that we face typically in the financial is revenue assurance. We all need to make sure that the revenue that has been booked in the system, in the audit report is aligned to IFRS. And this is where all other numbers are dependent on. While the numbers of uh, revenue has not been uh, used now in the new version three, but it is still being considered in filling up the form but if you really see the control point is revenue through which all the other numbers will move. Similarly, on the middle top part procurement, again, most of the important aspect is procurement as major chunk of cost of good purchased or services will be through procurement. So this is a major function. All the organization should play a close role to work with their suppliers to help their ICVs as well. Similarly, in terms of calculation, we need to make sure when we are reviewing the audits reports, and leveraging the cost of sales, the inventory adjustment is taken care of. Similarly, all reconciliation, whether it's fixed asset or physical verification, all should be done regularly to make sure the numbers are aligned. And the ownership of assets is with the legal entity, which is basically doing the ICV. Similarly, budgeting and control, all should move in tandem. Whatever we are committing as a part of ICV improvement plan, your commercial team, your commercial plan should be totally aligned. And whatever we are doing, it should be basically cost optimization. So whatever we are doing for the purpose of ICV in line with the commercial commitment, it has to have a cost which is relevant and acceptable to the management as well. Next slide, please. Now, before, before I move further on this page, just to give you a small example, at, as Charlie Munger, which who, who everybody knows works for 
uh, for Berkshire. He mentioned about accounting. Everybody in the organization should, should know accounting. And my view is beyond accounting, the reconciliation is very, very important. All the financials that we have, the organization should understand the financials. Now with that background, moving on to this page, left hand side, team leadership from the top has to be involved to do the ICV. The CEO, chief investment officer, all should be aligned. And there should be a project driver running the ICV, who is basically working with all the functions, all the functions, namely legal teams, accounting team, HR, or taxation teams, internal audit team, even transfer pricing. So all should be involved. So while some of you will be working for a multinational corporation and you have all these functions, so all should be aligned. But even in case of SME or medium sector where all these functions are not available, some of you have to wear this hat to make sure whatever we are aligning in our financials is aligned to all these other compliances as well. To give you an example, if there are multiple legal entities in the organization and you are buying internationally from different organization, then the transfer pricing rule has to be ensured. So your transfer pricing leader from tax team should take care of it that it is aligned so that you get the right ICV also, that's your target, but you also are aligned to the international transfer pricing policy as well. Similarly, so from the statutory audit report and your international accounting perspective, there should be a proper reconciliation from your international gap, for example, US gap, and then building the records to the uh, IFRS, and then the audit should full flow. So that internal management also have a complete control of the affairs within the organization. Next page, please. So now let's let's tear some threads here. Uh, if you really see the components which are involved is cost of purchase and localization of in terms of hiring experts or Emiratis. So on this page, if you see, we are heavily dependent on third party supplier. So like we are organizing this session today, you should be organizing a training session for your suppliers so that they are also on the same page. Similarly, like you will be working on your improvement plan, you need to drive improvement plan for some of your major suppliers so that you can manage the entire ecosystem because it is not alone at your level that you are going to build a system where we are focusing only on your, on your ICV score. You need to grow with your supplier and grow the entire ecosystem with them. So our view is the entire KYC program the supplier agreement all should be uh, built in grain about ICV within the system as well. And the management should regularly monitor how the progress is happening for the uh, ICV and all the related guidelines. Next page, please. So now another important aspect in terms of investment. So while ICV's uh, guidance is we should increase the investment, now there are certain important aspects which all the organization can leverage. For example, let's say capital work in progress. So which basically means if you have, you are developing certain area, including land, buildings, that should be capitalized properly so that you can make a maximum benefit out of those costs. Similarly, investment property. ICB guidelines also allows if you do the investment, not for your own usage, but also for further capital appreciation or for further sublease or rental, you can take the advantage. Similarly, property, plant and equipment, which is a fixed asset that you are going to use it for your own business, you can take the advantage for that as well. Similarly, uh, if you're developing a software, that cost is also allowed to be part of an investment, whether it is for own use or sale. Now, while these are the guidelines where you can leverage the investment, but the key component of legal entity having that license is also very, very important. So you need to make sure whatever you're doing for ICV, your legal license should speak the same language. If there is a disconnect, we would like you to check your legal licenses to make sure you upgrade those licenses as well. Next page, please. So to summarize, overall property equipment, investment, capital work in progress, all these should be utilized to help enhance your ICV scores. Next page, please. So
so this phase typically talks about uh, three areas which is donation so let's take a hypothetical position uh, one is you regularly do a donation and then you get an icv score now you can also leverage it where you have made the icv commitment but end of the quarter you are not in a position to make that icv score so donation is one of the very good option where you can meet your target of icv commitment the point is how do you balance out your cost optimization and the donation and your icv commitment similarly for hiring of emiratis and hiring of expats if you really observe uh, the requirement is average number of employees and the cost so similarly at the end of the year if if you see there is a uh, downfall in numbers of your icv commitment you can and if, if it ties to your commercial plan you can further increase the number of employees to make sure you get the advantage similarly from emirati perspective you get the advantages in three places which is in the cost in the employees uh, section and also in the bonus so you can leverage such cost in multiple other areas so i have one recommendation i mean uh, every we as a business we keep on debating whether uh, we work on the short term which is certification win the bid or in the long term but our view here is we have to win in the short term as well as the long run so i would like to recommend a book by uh, ex ceo of anival mr david kote winning now and winning in future winning later so that give you a lot of insight on how you can do something for your organization which is current quarter and also in parallel how we can grow in the long run and you would get get glimpses if you are able to connect dot between the icv program which is a long term program for all of us to win in the long run and immediately requirement also that's pretty much from my side thank you thank you very much uh, naresh um i would like to jump directly into the uh, questions and answer session because we have collected a lot of uh, questions in the meantime and i would like to uh, use the opportunity that we have uh, mr zappi on the call uh, and ask him the first question i look at my little helper the first question to mr zappi is um, what are the advantages of icv for companies that do not deal with adnoc ded abu dhabi ports or alda can you answer this question yeah sure uh, <laughs> That is, that is a really good question. And um, the, the great thing about the ICV formula is that it, it creates uh, a cascading oh, oh. or trickling effect in the, uh, in the procurement behavior of the uh, suppliers because um, each supplier's uh, manufacturing costs or third party spent attribute, depending on whether they're a manufacturer um, or a service provider depends to a, a, a certain extent on the vendors that they have procured their services or goods from. So the higher the vendor's ICV um, score is, um, the better they can score in that attribute. So essentially what we're seeing from a lot of vendors that are currently um, engaged in this program is that they are constantly looking to procure items and uh, services and goods from uh, vendors that have a higher ICV score. So essentially this is the new standard here in the UAE. Um, suppliers are rushing to get the ICV certificate because it really shows uh, how much contribution they have made to the economy. And this essentially um, allows them to secure more uh, work, more contracts and agreements from uh, vendors that deal directly with ADNOC. So I hope that answers the question. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Zabri. We have, uh, besides Mr. Zabri and Mr. Naresh, we have me, Mr. Pius Jorda on the, uh, on the panel, who is partner uh, of MBG and uh, ICB core member. Uh, together with his team, he works heavily on ICB certification and advises on strategies from uh, commercial operations and insurance practice. This is why I would like to uh, answer, ask Mr. Pius the second question. Um, what if I'm a manufacturer and service provider at the same time, do I need to have two certificates? Interesting question. Yeah. Uh, should I? Uh, yes. 
uh, if the company or uh, establishment is holding two uh, licenses, that is industry license and the commercial license, yes, they will have to obtain two separate ICV certificate. One is for industrial license and one is for the commercial license. Okay, thank you very much. I hope it answers the question. Um, Mr. Sapri, the next question is for you. While it was shown that ICB is not compulsory to submit tenders, it seems that ICB will increase the chances of winning the tender. Is my understanding correct? This has been asked by one of our participants. Mr. Zabni? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that, I was on mute. Yeah, so essentially, um, it's not, like I mentioned earlier, it's not really mandatory to have um, an ICV certificate in place to participate in ad hoc tenders. Uh, because the ICV score is essentially what uh, we look for when we uh, um, allow the suppliers to get the first right of refusal on the award of the uh, tender, obviously having an ICV certificate in place will essentially uh, give them a better chance of being awarded the contracts. Okay, thank you very much. The next question is for Mr. Piyush. Um, one of our entities is asking, do I need to have an Abu Dhabi license in order to get an ICV certificate? No, uh, all the entities in, uh, in any of the Emirates in UAE can apply for the ICV certificate. But the, if the entity is having commercial license and they have intent to participate in any tender if it's ad hoc, then yes, they should have a presence in Abu Dhabi. Otherwise, entities uh, situated in any of the Emirates can go for the ICV uh, certification. And uh, basically the core uh, reason behind it is that ICV uh, is sort of a chain reaction. Means if you are tier one, tier two supplier, then the tier one supplier uh, will of course ask you for the ICV certificate because your ICV certificate is going to improve his own uh, score. So all the entities in all the Emirates uh, uh, should go for the ICV certification uh, to uh, win more and more businesses from the tier one suppliers to the ad hoc. Thank you, Mr. Piyush. Um, Mr. Zapri, I have uh, two questions and uh, both deal with the ICV improvement plan. The question is, um, is the percentage fixed? It means 60% for improvement plan and 40% on the current certificate. Uh, when you answer this question, can you also elaborate a little bit more which advice or tips you can give companies who are submitting an ICB improvement plan from an ad hoc perspective? Yeah, sure. The, uh, the actual uh, percentage for each tender, we don't really um, uh, declare the actual percentage we don't we don't declare the actual percentage uh, for the weightage in terms of how much weightage does an ICB certificate weight on the tender and how much um, weightage does an ICB improvement plan uh, have. So it's not always the sixty forty that we uh, saw in that scenario that I presented on the uh, on the screen. Um, so I think that uh, takes care of the first question. Now, in terms of the second question, the um, the ICV improvement plan has to cover the full duration of the agreement, including the, um, the optional uh, duration of the, uh, of the agreement. And the ICV percentage that is uh, submitted during the tender for any particular agreement year has to be higher or the same as the year before. So the, the actual figure that is submitted for any agreement year should not be lower than the previous year. So um, it's, it's, it's pretty much gonna be a strategic effort that each supplier needs to look at in terms of exactly how they structure their improvement plan. But as a general rule, the, the actual ICV percentage that is planned for any particular agreement year cannot be uh, lower. It's gotta be higher than the same uh, or the same as the year before. Okay, thank you very much for our clarification. Another question for Mr. Naresh. Is there a possibility that my ICV score declines when the certificate is renewed? Absolutely, thanks uh, Beyond for asking and raising this point. 
so there is no uh, no surety that whatever number you have achieved will continue to be there it is again dependent on your financials so a commitment uh, has to be genuinely there to enhance and improve upon so if the cost has gone down because of different reason or the number of headcount has gone down definitely your score will be lower so it will again depend on, on the variable of the icv score uh, which has been illustrated earlier okay thank you very much um, naresh uh, thank you very much for, for to the panelists the nordic business council especially to johanna uh, this seminar was targeted to for 45 minutes we have uh, almost achieved it um, we were not able to answer all your questions but we will personally reach out to you and uh, try to answer these uh, questions to your uh, satisfaction uh, our email address is mentioned on the bottom of this slide uh, send us an email if you have any questions we reach out to you and, and, and clarify um, thank you very much for your time today again i would like to thank the business um, council the nordic business council I hope it was of use for you and your member, and we hope to stay in touch. Before uh, I leave, um, Johanna Zadi, anything from your side? Maybe on mute. Okay. Thank you very much for your attendance, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to highlight one, the, the upcoming webinar, which deals with the, economic, the UAE Economic Substance Regulation which has been uh, released last week. Uh, companies who are performing relative activities should definitely uh, join our next webinar on the 17th of September, 11 o'clock. Wish you a wonderful day ahead. Thank you very much.